Generally speaking, we can categorize waves into two types. So we have transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves. So let's begin by defining what a transverse wave is. So when the particles that compose the medium through which the wave travels oscillate perpendicularly with respect to the direction of the motion of that wave, such a wave is known as a transverse wave. And one particular example of a transverse wave is a mechanical wave that is propagating through a cord. So let's suppose we take one end of our cord and we create an up and down motion with our hand. So if we continue to move our hand with the same exact uh, period, well then we'll create a wave, a mechanical wave, that will take the following sinusoidal form. Now, this wave is an example of a transverse wave because if we take any single point along the cord, the velocity of the particle at that point will either point upward or downward along the y-axis. And that direction will be perpendicular to the direction of the motion of our wave. So let's suppose we choose this region right before we reach the trough. So the velocity of our particle at this region points downward along the y-axis and the velocity of the wave points in the positive direction along the x-axis. And notice that these two velocities are transverse. They're perpendicular to one another and therefore this is one example of a transverse wave. Once again, a transverse wave is a wave in which the particles that are found inside the medium have a velocity that is perpendicular to the velocity of our propagating wave. Now, let's define what a longitudinal wave is. Well, when the particles oscillate along the same direction of motion of the wave, such a wave is known as a longitudinal wave. So one example of a longitudinal wave is the compression and stretching of a coiled spring. So in a longitudinal wave, a series of compressions and expansions propagate the wave along our spring. So the compression regions are simply defined as regions where the coils are close together. And our expansion regions are simply defined as regions where the coils are far apart. So let's examine the following spring in closer detail. So these are our compression regions and these compression regions correspond to the crests of our transverse waves to these regions while the troughs these expansion regions correspond to our troughs to these regions of our transverse wave. Now, one other example of a longitudinal wave that we'll talk about in more detail in the following chapter is known as a sound wave. So let's suppose we have a loudspeaker and the loudspeaker creates sound by essentially vibrating this region rapidly. So this region oscillates back and forth and that oscillation interacts with the air molecules surrounding this region and that compresses the air molecules found in that region. So this side is compressed, the next region is expanded, this region is then compressed, expanded, compressed, and so on and so forth. So these regions are the compression regions where the density of air molecules is higher and these are the expanded regions. The expanded regions in which the density of the air molecules is lower. So a vibrating loudspeaker alternately compresses and expands the air molecules in contact producing a longitudinal sound wave. Now in the same exact way that we can discuss
discuss the wavelength, the velocity and frequency of a transverse wave, we can use those same physical quantities to describe our longitudinal waves. Now the wavelength in a longitudinal wave is the distance between two consecutive compressions. So between the two consecutive crests of our longitudinal wave. Just like the distance between any two crests on our transverse wave is also the wavelength. Now, the velocity of a longitudinal wave is simply how quickly our compressions are taking place, while the frequency of a longitudinal wave is simply how, how many cycles or how many compressions are made every single second. 